Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon C100 Mark II product overview. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this brand new camera system, which is an evolution of the original C100, which I in fact own two of. And Canon has taken the feedback and input from users like you and myself and has created now this camera system. Some really, really great stuff that I'm excited about. Internally, some really great things like dual pixel CMOS AF feature, new recording formats. We can do AVC HD and MP4. We can do 60p, 1080p recording. So let's get started. First thing I really want to talk to you about is AF or autofocus. This camera now ships standardly with the dual pixel CMOS AF feature, which was an upgrade on the original C100. And this is fantastic, whether you're running and gunning and you're using the one-shot AF and the AF lock buttons on the camera, or you're mounting this to something like a Movi with a wide angle lens and then setting it to continuous autofocus, I've found it's invaluable in certain shooting situations. In order to do that, all I have to do is go into the menu and then under camera setup, I'm going to scroll down to AF for autofocus and then I can choose my mode. Do I want it to be a one-shot autofocus where I use the one-shot AF button on the front of the camera system or do I want it to be continuous where it's actually looking for focus all of the time? Now the second thing that I want to talk about is another autofocus feature and you'll see here that I have face AF or face autofocus. This works with supported EFS lenses, STM EFS lenses, and right now I have the 18 to 135 on here. And in order to use this feature really effectively, we also want to set up our C100 Mark II to really take advantage of some of the features that it has to use these kinds of lenses. So I've got two choices here. I've got face only and face priority. My preference is face priority, and when I'm using this, if it loses the face detection, which is a contrast detection system, then it will default back to our dual pixel CMOS AF. So really great to have this feature. So I'm going to put face priority on there, step out of here, and you can actually see that it's recognizing three of these faces that are in our frame. I can use a joystick on the OLED display, and I can switch between the faces that it's recognizing. So in order to use these EFS lenses effectively with the camera, we're going to go ahead and just set up a couple of things to make sure we can do that. The first thing I want to do is go into iris, and under iris I can turn on zoom iris correction. And this is just going to make sure that when I am going through the focal range of the lens, in this case 18 to 135, that I'm not going to see any issues in terms of my exposure. And in fact, if I step out of that, and I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in and out so you can see that. You can see that right now I'm not seeing any exposure changes in my image. The second thing that I want to do in the camera setup menu under EFS lens, I'm going to turn that on. And as soon as I do that, you're going to see that there's just a slight scale. And this is just going to make sure that we don't have any issues when we're zooming into the lens in terms of any edge problems. And then the last thing I want to do is scroll down to peripheral illumination correction. So you'll see here that it's recognizing the lens that I'm using and this camera ships with 114 Canon lenses supported with this feature. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on and that just makes sure that we don't have any of those vignetting problems based on the lens that we're using. And now we actually have this set up to use this lens really effectively with this camera system. I want to go into the video setup menu and talk to you about this HDMI out and not for recording purposes but for monitoring purposes and in order to do that what I need to do is I need to put the camera into a Canon log recording mode. So I'm going to go into the camera setup menu. I'm going to choose CP or custom picture cinema locked. Now we are set up for a Canon log recording. I'm now going to go into my video setup menu and under HDMI, and this is new to the Mark II, there is a LUT option for lookup table. And when I turn that on, by default I am looking at a Rec 709 LUT being applied to what's coming out of my HDMI out. And then we even have the option to choose wide DR. Now I could record this, but this is really for monitoring purposes when you have a client on set. And this really takes the view assist feature that we had in the original C100 to another level. And if we are going to be using Canon Log and recording to an external recorder, 
we just want to remember to turn off that LUT before we actually roll camera. I do want to show you one other thing. So I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to scroll down to the OLED viewfinder setup menu. And inside of there under OLED setup, there is an option down here called luminance. And I have it on by default. And I just want to show you this, that when I turn that on and off, you can see how different the OLED display is. And when you're shooting outside with this camera system and you are using the OLED, you definitely want that luminance to be on. One of my favorite features on the original C100 is double slot recording. And we still have that, and I can go into double slot recording, but we can not only record the same data in the same codec at the same data rate to both cards, which is fantastic when you're using the camera by yourself and you don't have a data wrangler to pull cards, back them up, and everything else like that, but we can also record in one codec and one data rate to one card, and then we can also record a separate MP4 file at a much lower bit rate. And with the C100 Mark II, we now have functionality which is internally new to the entire Cinema EOS line. We can set up a secure Wi-Fi network. We can transfer proxies in new situations. We can transfer files. And we can even set up the camera system so that we can use a Wi-Fi network, an ad hoc Wi-Fi network, to control the camera using a smartphone, a tablet, or a laptop computer. So this is great functionality now built into the camera system. And as I said, refer to the user manual based on the application in terms of what you want to do with these network settings. Unlike the original C100, on the C100 Mark II, we can actually choose one of two movie formats or codecs. We can actually record in ABC HD, or we can record in MP4. What I want to show you is how to set up the camera so that you can do slow motion recording. MP4 is set to 24 megabits per second, 1920 by 1080. We are at 23.98 progressive. And step out of there. And then I'm going to go down to special recording. And under special recording, I'm going to choose slow and fast motion. And what I want to choose here is 59.94p or progressive. I'm going to select that. It's going to reboot the camera. And then if I step out of this, and I'm just going to go ahead and step out of the menu, we can see that on the camera system here that it reads 59.94p over 23.98p. So it's going to capture at essentially 60 frames per second, and it's going to do an in-camera conversion. And when we actually go to playback, it will actually be slow motion. Now, I'm going to go back into the menu here. And I'm going to turn that off. It's going to reboot. Now I'm actually going to go up to movie format. And I'm going to change this back from MP4 to ABC HD. We can change our bit rate to 28 megabits per second, which is a new bit rate in the camera system. And when we do that, it'll reboot the camera system. And you can see here that our frame rate defaults to 59.94p. So this is great for two applications. When we're shooting progressive content that has lots of motion to it. So we're doing things like sports, or we're in situations where we're shooting wildlife or outside where there's a lot of motion, then this can be a great frame rate to record in. But we can also record in 59.94, and then we can take this footage into a timeline, and we can actually slow it down in post-production. So lots and lots of options now in terms of movie formats, our codecs, and our frame rates that we can use in the camera system. And as you can see, with all of these external features with the C100 Mark II, all of the new internal features, we have a full HD camera system that's using a 4K sensor that gives us an amazing number of options and is a huge upgrade to the original C100, which I know and love. Thanks for watching.